Hi, welcome to this video tutorial for Tetric. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the arpeggiator in Tetric. So for this one we're using the, the Launchpad Pro. Um, the device works on all launch pads, so um, 1, 2 and Pro and also Push 1 and 2. So once you have got some shapes moving around and they're creating horizontal lines which trigger the chord engine then the chord engine sends the chord out and it feeds into the arpeggiator. So how the arpeggiator works is it first of all organizes all the notes from lowest to highest and then lets you do some um, various tricks with them. So we can do regular things like you'd expect with an arpeggiator. Um, we can choose whether the notes go up or down. Down here it will show us um, how many notes are coming in so whether it's four or five within the chord, and then it's showing us the actual um, the order of them. So we choose up and down, or random. Okay, we can choose how many octaves the arpeggiator runs through, and whether the arpeggiators uh, follow the same order, or whether they go down or up or random. So you can create some nice variations with this. What you can also do is you can reorder the notes. So that's what these numbers here represent. So um, you have up to 16 possibilities. This means you've got, it allows you to have up to 16 notes coming in within a chord, um, which might be a little bit odd, but it could be quite fun with the arpeggiator. Because what we can do, we can either drag up and down on these numbers, or we can just use the note order um, view and what this will do it was let us say well let's take the third note and I actually want it rather than being the third note in the chord I want it to just repeat the first note so if I did this I would just get the first note of any chord coming in or I could go for like the third, the third at this point or I could go for the third there the second here. Obviously you need a chord coming in with more notes to be using the rest of these and this could either come from the chord engine or you can actually send your own chords um, straight into the arpeggiator by bypassing the sequencer and the chord engine. Okay, the key then to the, I guess the power of the arpeggiator is the, the velocity sequencer. Um, so regardless of which notes coming in and what sequence is being generated, we can actually use a, a separate velocity sequencer. And this can run between either one and 32 steps. And you can choose specifically the velocity for each step coming in. You can deactivate steps also. We can choose different rates and we can work in triplets or dotted. Uh, a nice feature to use the to control all of the velocities at once is um, a dynamics control here so we can set a threshold and then if we use this slider here, if we go positive, anything above the threshold, the velocity will be increased and anything below will be decreased. Uh, but we can also invert that as well. So it's a nice way of just finding out different velocity variations. This is way more powerful if you're using an instrument that actually has lots of velocity control. So I'm using collision here for this. As you can see, I've got lots of different uh, velocity um, sort of sensitive parameters set. We can randomize settings as well, like so. We can choose to reverse the velocity sequencer and we can choose whether it will reset every time a new chord 
comes into the arpeggiator. We can also turn the velocity sequence off, which means it just uses the velocity that's being generated by the chord. In this case, every note is running at 100, but if you are sending your own chord from, say, a MIDI clip in, uh, and you are bypassing the chord engine, then you might have to, it will use the velocity for each individual note. Again, you can send MIDI into the ARP, and even though the arpeggiator is running, if you're using note mode on a control surface, it will add your, your notes on top of the arpeggiated sequence and mix them in with it. If you're using Launchpad or Push, then you may want to use this to control the arpeggiator. On Launchpad, simply press User again, and the layout changes. This is now controlling the arpeggiator. So the key things you can control is you can, you can control the velocity of up to 32 steps here. So we can pick which step we want to edit, and what you will see as you go through is your side burns here, now represent the velocity for each step. So if we go to step one, we've got eight different velocity settings we can choose from. Step four. User and user two on Launchpad one and two is shift. On Launchpad Pro, we can just use the shift button. Holding this down lets us mute specific steps. Okay, the orange section represents the note order sequencer. So what we can do with this is by clicking on a, a note, we're choosing one of the 16 um, different notes, and then the white section determines um, the order. So at the moment, one is one, but two is nine. So we could switch this back to two, like so. that. So it's a quick way of just changing the sequence with the controller. And you can switch between the two modes easily. For Launchpad Pro, the bottom buttons still behave as usual and you can switch between your different modes. If you want to use user 2 mode, then just turn off the control surface control there. The device will still run, but you're not using your control surface.